Public Q and A presence ask Reddit question. What simple life hack should everyone know? Google it first. Get into a routine of stretching your hip flexors and chest if you sit for long periods. Absolute game changer for people who suffer with chronic lower back pain as a result of being hunched over a desk. A Y suggested stretches. Foundation training helped me reverse three years of progressively worsening back slash hip problems due to sedentary lifestyle. Losing weight was equally important though. Web address. Five minutes of daily exercise is infinitely better than zero minutes and will make a big difference. No matter how good a person you are, at some point you will be the bad guy in someone else's story. You can't please everyone and you shouldn't try to. Be a good person and have friendships with people you can respect and look up to. Edit, holy guacamole Batman, thank you for the gold and awards, kind intraweb strangers. Sometimes you're the bad guy because you're trying to be a good person. Like when your best friend of 15 years asks you due to something against your moral compass, and you say no, and they end the friendship and write a book about it. And you have to be okay with that. R slash oddly specific. If you have trouble choosing, flip a coin. While you're waiting to get the result, your mind automatically starts to wish for what it wants. Then you can choose easily. I've been doing this for big life decisions for years. Sometimes I don't realize what I want, but instead realize it doesn't matter, and I just go with the flip result. If there's a jar or container you can't open, run the lid under hot water for a 3-0 SEC, dry it so you can get a good grip, then open. Never had this not work. Some pretty good stuff on here. Just beat it on the counter. The jar. I meant the jar. Too late, now my counter is all sticky. Anybody got any tips for that? Edit, thanks for the wholesome award, you sick bastard. Run it under hot water for 30 seconds. Don't take criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from. Edit, you've taken my advice, take my criticism, Reddit awards are dumb, you should support a local brewery instead. Buy anything you'd need in your kitchen from a restaurant supply store. Anything, plates, glasses, pans, etc. There are a few online that sell to consumers. Those $8.99 tongs at a box store are like $1. 30, a 16 ounces mason jar glass that sells for $3 to $4 a piece can be bought as a 12 pack case for $8. 55, Oneida China plates that sell for $345. 84 a case for $57. 84, I just bought a 2 foot by 2 foot wooden butcher's block cutting board that would have been close to $400 for $55. Edit, also, this shit is built to last years in a commercial kitchen under constant use. It sure as shit can handle your Sunday brunch cooking ass. Edit 2, I've been buying from here, web address. Edit 3, for those asking about the EU, you slash Kumiao replied, web address. If you're in Ireland, best site and fast delivery Irish edit 4, Yoza. I'll get to responding to all of the questions this week. Thank you for the gold, platinum ET. Al but no more please and thank you to those that reached out looking to tip on apps or Bitcoin. Please consider donating to my favorite charity instead Project Pinball, they provide and maintain pinball machines free of charge to long-term children's hospitals and take donations, sell merch or if you're feeling lucky. They run two continuous raffles at $50 and $75 a ticket that close every 200 sold where the winner gets a brand new pinball machine shipped to them. Now, how do you find restaurant supply stores? Do you have a link to any of the online stores? Web address. This is why I am on Reddit. Finds like this. If you put something down temporarily, say out loud I've put the screwdriver by the microwave or whatever. This engages many more areas of the brain, particularly the language centers, 
which creates a richer memory making it less likely you'll forget where you put it. In a similar vein, I will say it out loud when I turn stove burners off, unplug my hair straightener etc. I've found this helps me eliminate those moments where I leave the house or am in bed and I'm suddenly like did I leave that on. My wife and I made this a ritual due to her OCD. Anytime we're going out, I'll say to her, hey. I unplugged the iron. Saying it in a funny voice helps too, because it's easier to remember that Shrek told her the iron was off. For the iron thing, I've heard a therapist recommend to actually bring the iron with you, to be completely sure that it is off. Great. I forgot to say I left the iron at the table, and now it's at McDonald's probably wondering why the ice cream machine is broken. Most of life is just showing up to things. Not this year it isn't. Brush your teeth more thoroughly before bed after you are done eating and drinking for the day. Morning brushing is important too, but more so for fresh breath while evening cleaning will prevent bacteria from breeding and damaging your teeth and gums. Most of the time keeping your mouth shut is a great option. In a lot of daunting situation, for example asking someone out or standing up for yourself, you only need to be brave for a few seconds to get it over with. If you want to wear something white slash light in color, wear underwear that matches the color of your skin, not white. Or light gray. It hides better under white than white does. Same principle works for your primer coat before you paint your walls. If you have a bright or intense color that you want to paint, using a gray primer will help your paint cover better than going over white primer. Source, Sherwin-Williams Manager. Imagine my horror when my first training bra was white and my skin is caramel. Seeing the outline in the mirror under my white uniform shirt freaked me out because I knew others would notice even though my mom said it doesn't show because it's white. She is fair skinned but lady I am brown. Edit, please let me specify that a training bra is for young individuals going through puberty. The sexual comments I'm reading are very awkward and gross. Congrats to people who go braless as adults because you feel empowered to do so and are comfortable doing so. Don't imply that you like seeing breasts with or without bras when this post was about a child. Don't care how white she is, I'm white, German, English, and Dutch heritage, and white bras show through white shirts on white people. The issue is that nobody's told her they can see her bra. That's true. I'm a ghostly white redhead. You can still see. Cami is required or a thicker material. Personally I don't fuck with white because I'm a klutzy, messy person. Sometimes changing your pillowcase daily can help with acne. I use a clean t-shirt over my pillow to accomplish the same effect. I usually put a clean towel on my pillow and sleep on it. That way I don't have to change the pillowcase often and can put the new towel on and wash the used one. I have like 10 cases and switch them every day. Helps a lot. This comment made me go order pillowcases. Like, a lot of pillowcases. To add to this, a lot of people wash their face when they get up but not before bed. Washing before you sleep will help keep the pillowcase cleaner and prevent breakouts. You don't need to apply a ton of night cream or anything, just a medicated pad with salicylic acid will do. Your body will put moisture back on while you sleep, and you'll wake up with a less oily face. Do your morning routine, and make sure to add moisturizer as needed in the morning instead. Wash your sheets with unscented slash sensitive detergent too. The perfumes are sometimes an irritant to the delicate skin on your face. Good advice, I'd just add that moisturizing is important for oily skin types too, as skin that lacks moisture will overproduce oils to compensate. Dry skin types will like a creamer, heavier moisturizer while oily skin types will probably prefer something lighter. And always choose a gentle, non-fragranced one. And it seems counterproductive, but using an oil-based cleanser like DHC, and using oils to moisturize, I like First Aid Beauty's oil, on oily skin works and works nicely. 
Everyone is different, but I have oily, acne-prone skin, and those two products are in my face cleansing repertoire, and my skin is doing amazing, sweetie. Edit to add, because it just popped in my head. My dudes. Dudes, you have skin. You should moisturize. It's not just for ladies, moisturizing is for everybody. Edit, thanks to you slash air320 for popping my gold cherry. Much appreciated. Train yourself to always keep an eye out for things that need to go in the direction you are going. If you are about to go downstairs, does any item nearby need to go with you? Perhaps a cup can be brought to the sink on your way to the bathroom. Honey does not go bad, if it has gone solid it has just crystallized, and can become liquid again with just a little heat. Put the container of solidified honey in a container of hot water. Put it in the microwave once. It worked but made the bottle bear depressed. Oh bother. So many people throw out perfectly good honey when it gets crystallized while my favorite type of honey is crystallized. I remember reading somewhere that in certain European countries, no idea which, they actually use temperature-controlled rooms to get crystallized honey to the perfect texture for spreading on toast. My European family keep bees, half of the product gets sold runny, the other half gets put in a cool room until it sets. Best damn stuff to put on toast let me tell you. Unfortunately with the prevalence of rapeseed crops in the UK, the honey is never as good as it used to be. If you ever fall off a ship slash ferry at sea, and were lucky enough to be spotted, don't try to swim your way to safety. The more you try to swim, the lesser the chances of survival. Just try to keep afloat and conserve energy, and body heat, while rescue team do what they're supposed to. Unless you are in hypothermic waters, the best bet always is to stay afloat without trying to swim to somewhere. This information about falling overboard, hypothermia and conditions, survival at sea etc. are based on my own experience of 12 years sailing on merchant ships like this. Link will take you to a time-lapse video I made when crossing slash sailing under the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, USA. This kind of ship is called a container ship. Turn your bed mattress when you renew your blanket. Through time your mattress will deform, and that can make you sleep worse. Edit, some mattress have a specific side and top that they need to be. Thanks for pointing that out you slash shaved ape. Asterisk some mattresses shouldn't be turned, check the directions when you buy it. But if it needs it, this tip is brilliant. Not necessarily a hack per SE, but learn some basic knife skills, the amount of time you will save chopping vegetables a few times a week, minimum, for the rest of your life far outweighs the amount of time it takes to learn, plus you can use the extra time to keep the kitchen clean, and that makes everything less stressful while you're cooking and makes the cleanup faster as well. Tell that to my girlfriend who insists that a butter knife can be used to cut anything. Squash tomatoes suck. This went in a very different direction than I expected after reading knife skills. While you were eating vegetables whole, I studied the blade. While you were practicing premarital sex, I studied the blade. And now, when the kitchen is a disaster and the vegetables are unchanged opt, you have the audacity to come to me for help. To confirm which circuit breaker is associated to an outlet, plug in an old radio and turn the volume up before you flip the circuit breaker. You can also do this with a vacuum if you are like me and don't have a radio. Or hairdryer. Can I do this with a new radio? Only old. $90. Most newer radios have an electronic power button and have to have power before they will turn on. Whereas old radios will have a mechanical switch so they can be put in the on state without power and will turn on as soon as power is supplied. Actually pretty useful. Whenever you have a time to be somewhere, aim to be there 15 minutes early to allow for time snags or for traffic. People respect punctuality. On time every time, better yet ahead of time. If you have a spare minute, or are just playing video games, or on a computer at home, 
take a few minutes to just pet your dog slash cat and really appreciate them. A phrase I heard somewhere just really stuck with me, pets are only a part of your life but you are your pet's entire life. Fuck where is my dog? Remember to say out loud wherever you put your dog. But say it in Shrek's voice. I put my dog by the microwave. I renew my dog every day to avoid acne. If you bring something to someone's house that you don't want to forget, put your keys with it, assuming you can trust the people there. Also, get a tile or similar Bluetooth device so you never lose your keys or phone again. Tiles are game changers. Just remember to put a clap finder on the remote that finds tiles. The phone is the finder. And to find the phone, just double click the button on the tile. I have like four tiles. So if I can't find one of them, first I use one of the other tiles to find my phone. Then I use the phone to find the missing tile. It's amazing. God damn dude how much shit do you lose? 4. Read the 3 and 4 star reviews for the most reliable information on Amazon items. And 2 star reviews for books. Seeing what people dislike tells much. Try on your favorite to see, up to clarify, the idea here is that people writing two-star reviews project their views and values when arguing that the book is bad for them. And when their views are opposite to yours, it may suggest that you might actually enjoy the book. Let's say you are interred in mind-stimulating philosophy book, and a person writes something like this is boring, the writing is too complex, ideas are difficult to follow, the language is too intricate, quit reading after 20 pages. It may mean that it is what you look for. Problem with that is, there's so many stupid reasons people give for disliking stuff. Three star reviews are usually the most realistic. Edit, best practice when looking through reviews is to read some reviews from one star all the way to five stars, so you get a good overview and a more complete picture of the product. This is just a response, not a comprehensive guide to reviews, lol. One star didn't receive the item. One star, the website is glitchy while shopping a product on Amazon. One star, the hard drive was advertised as 100 GB, but when I plugged it in it has I only have 96. 9 GB available. 5 star, I hate it. Medium white star it's great. My favorite ever review, 2 star, couldn't be worse. One star, loved the book but it arrived late. Question, is this waterproof? Answer, I don't know. My most recent favorite stupid review was for a Camelback water bottle for two stars. The bottle doesn't come in a nice box, just some plastic. Ugly packaging. Reviews like that should be able to removed under some sort of review review process. I worked in marketing for a company and someone gave us a one star review and the text was I meant to press five stars. Well thanks, that helps our rating look better. Manners and general politeness will get you far and become the norm with but a small amount of practice. I'm not talking overboard M lady but a simple please and thank you with a genuine smile. Manners and general politeness will get you far. I'll add to this. Be especially nice to receptionists. They are the gatekeepers. Whether you're there to interview for a job or attempt to sell something to the owners, if you are rude to the receptionist, you can kiss your chances goodbye. This applies doubly over the phone where body language and facial expressions are non-existent. Make sure your tone isn't condescending or else your message is going in the trash if it isn't mission critical. Source, am a receptionist. Interviewers always stop by my desk to get my seal of approval before moving forward in the hiring process. I have vetoed individuals for being rude slash snobby and once for leaving a mess in the bathroom. My vote counts. Edit, since this is getting attention, I'll use this opportunity for a cheesy segue. Your vote counts, too. Register to vote. Also, thanks for the gold. You will often have to make decisions in life without being able to know all the information related to the choices. Being able to identify what you don't know is invaluable. 
It allows you to make assumptions and contingency plans if those assumptions fail. I want to slap every person that quips, if you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. You cannot function in life without making assumptions. The trick is to identify them as such so that you can be better prepared when they are resolved. It sounds crazy, but talking to yourself helps in these scenarios too. Use yourself as a sounding board. Just hearing the thoughts out loud can add a new perspective, and in having the conversation with yourself, you need to think about what you want to say and why, and therefore you're opening yourself up to think about it in different ways. Or maybe I am just nuts and talk to myself a lot. I've heard this referred to as the rubber duck principle. I guess some folks think it's less crazy to talk to a rubber duck than to talk to yourself. In my work, software engineering, it's a pretty common practice to borrow someone just to sit there and listen to a thought. They usually don't need to even provide feedback, and are sometimes just replaced with inanimate objects like a rubber duck. But yeah. There's just something about forcing thoughts into verbal statements that often provides the clarity that is needed. I'd add to this. A decision is only good or bad at the time it's made. People who say that turned out to be a bad decision are missing this point. It's only a bad decision if you chose poorly based on the information you had at the time. For example, betting on a horse that is in form and on favored going is not a bad decision star. The horse ultimately losing doesn't make the decision bad. Betting on a horse that's out of form, doesn't like the going and looks a bit lame is a bad decision. If that horse wins, it was still a bad decision, you simply got away with it. Asterisk ignoring any judgments about betting as a whole. Not really a life hack, but a general advice. Do what works for you. It doesn't matter if it's unconventional, if it works it works. I have ADHD, and for me that means keeping things organized is difficult AF. I also have a hard time remembering pretty much anything. I keep my laundry in boxes underneath my bed, organized by color. That way I won't forget anything in the laundry basket, I just empty the whole thing into the washer. Also makes it easier to see what I have to wash first. I live in Sweden, and here we have sort of a deposit, sorry if that's not the right word, on most plastic bottles and cans. I.e. we pay like 20 cents for the bottle slash can. We then return it and get the 20 cents back. Most people keep those bottles and cans in like a wardrobe or such. However, I am terrible at putting those in there. I forget to bring them there and it just starts to pile up. Instead, I had a laundry basket just within reach from my bed, so I just had to lean out and put it in there. Unconventional, but it worked. I have like a million of these weird hacks going, but the important part is that it's okay to do what works for you. It doesn't matter if other people are able to just do it, if it's hard for you it's hard for you. I've had to explain my solutions a few times, but in the end, most people agree that sure it might not be what they're doing, but it's better than the alternative. Please share more of your ADHD hacks. Not off but check out Organizing Solutions for People with ADHD by Susan B. Pinsky. I have a whiteboard on the fridge, so when I run out of something I write it up immediately. Like pasta, rice and so on. It's right there, so it's hard to forget. Writing a list in my phone or on a piece of paper is harder, because then I have to remember to actually write it down. I keep all my appointments in my Google Calendar, color-coded, green, fun slash spare time, yellow doctor's appointments and health-related stuff, red, work slash study-related stuff. I also have two reminders, one 24 hours prior to the event, and one 3 hours prior, that way I can still make it from A to B if I forgot about it. I organize my wardrobe by garment style. Like t-shirts, crop tops, cropped hoodies, long hoodies slash cardigans, socks, panties and bras, shorts and skirts, pants. That way I can always find the type of garment I'm after. I have a set spot for my keys, if they're not there I won't find them. Forgot to mention I have a laundry basket for towels and bed linens. We have a magnetic paper clip on the inside of our entry door. If I have to remember something, whether it be to bring something or do something before I leave, 
I write it on a piece of paper and put it there. Would work fine with a sticky one as well, our door just happened to be magnetic. We have paper bins beside our bed and under the couch table. That way stuff like wrappers, potato chips bags or whatever won't stay on the table. I have like for phone chargers. One in the living room, one in the bedroom, one in the hobby room, and one in my bag. That way I won't have to move them around and won't have to remember to put one in my bag if I'm going somewhere. Sorry this got long and slightly messy, but I hope someone can benefit from it. I'm sure there's more but that's what I can think or write now, with some help from my boyfriend, because I can't remember shit face with tears of joy, accidentally posted this in the main thread lol. When moving house, always set up your bedroom slash make the bed first so when you're exhausted, and just had enough you can fall into bed. Nothing worse than being exhausted and having to make the bed before getting into it. Edit, good grief, that blew up. Thank you for the awards. Edit 2. To all the grammar Nazis, I apologize profusely for using your instead of your. I don't always proofread as well as I should, but please, get a grip, it's a typo not axe murder. Also if you have time, plan where do you want the furniture slash boxes of your stuff in the house. Placing it in the right room straight away helps a lot. And number your boxes, unpack the highest numbers first, generally it's the stuff you were using up to the point you left. If you fucked up, admit it, unless you are talking to cops but in most situations just admitting how you were wrong and accepting responsibility is so much easier than trying to blame someone or something else or make up an excuse when you own the mistake it puts the onus back on the other person to accept that be mature and move on. If you try and deny or shift blame it forces that person to examine those reasons and if they are BS, come back at you, dragging the process out and leading to unpleasant callouts and confrontations. Along this line, Learning how to apologize will make life easier. Keep it short and clear. Specifically say, I am sorry. Identify the thing you are sorry for. Unless your remorse is particularly great, stop there. Only attempt to offer an explanation for egregious wrongdoing. If you offer an explanation, you must also identify how you are going to prevent the issue in the future. If you offer an explanation, Make sure it's not actually an attempt at an excuse. If you offer an explanation, rule 1 still applies. Do not ever include an excuse in an apology. Ever. Ever ever. I also have a personal rule that I will only apologize when I feel remorse. I will not give you an apology just because you think you deserve one, or just because someone tells me I should apologize. Lastly, do not ever state, I am sorry if. It conveys that you are not currently sorry for your actions, and that you might be sorry only under certain circumstances. It also removes most of the sincerity. If you don't know the circumstances, you probably aren't actually sorry. You're better off asking about the conditional first, and then issuing an actual apology if warranted. If you do know the circumstances, leave the if out and just identify what it is you feel bad about. One more thing to add to this, apologize once and then move on. Again unless what you've done is horrific, you should apologize once and then it's up to the other person to accept or not. Don't keep apologizing and don't let anyone drag you over the coals. Yes I also feel like people respect you more when you can own up to your mistakes. Tell the people you love that you love them, more often. Turn natural peanut butter, the ones where the oil separates, and you have to mix it, upside down for a few hours. It will bring the oil to the top and make it a lot easier to mix. Then, after you mix it, put it in the fridge, and the cold will solidify the oil so you don't have to mix it again. Edit to a few points. Natural peanut butter doesn't solidify to a point that it's hard to spread when cold so that's not something you have to worry about when storing it in the fridge. To the person who said just buy emulsified, I mean sure, but Adam's peanut butter is best peanut butter. And I know someone was going to call out my a lot haha. Regularly change the oil in your car. On time. 
do it. We'll help it last longer. Edit, what in the fuck? So that's what happens when your inbox blows up. Thanks for the award too, my first. My first car I owned when I lived alone, I had it for a full year before the guy I was dating asked me when I last changed the oil. Um. You mean it has to go to the mechanic even though it's working fine? Don't be like that, folks. My old roommate totaled her car engine doing that. Her parents sent her to college with a car and apparently didn't teach her that. The rest of our group of roommates learned she never changed it and collectively said oh fuck in one way or another. The easiest way to remove blood stains is to use bar soap and hand wash it. Works better than using laundry detergent. Nursing trick, hydrogen peroxide. This is the real LPT. Once I discovered that, I thought of all the pants and underwear that could have been saved over the years. Works amazingly well. When you're cooking and the recipe calls for onions and garlic, don't put the garlic into the pan until the onion is nearly translucent. Garlic cooks way faster than onions do, if you throw them in at the same time it won't taste as good slash the garlic will burn. It literally takes 30 seconds for minced garlic to cook. Also, if you're a home cook, sharpen your knives often. Thought of a few more tips, love chives and parsley in your egg slash omelet slash anything else, but hate the hassle of cutting them slash using the herbs before it turns. Get dried chives and dried parsley instead, it rehydrates quickly in sauces slash eggs and tastes the same, it's also way cheaper. This tip can apply to a lot of herbs. While fresher is always better, dried is often still delicious while still being in a student Y budget. Add a bit of vinegar to your beans if you're making anything beany, a lot of home cooks think that vinegar is gross and it is by itself, but a dash of vinegar can really make beans, sauces and marinades pop. On the topic of garlic, when you are cooking in the oven roast skillet, you can add garlic cloves with the hard skin, but remove as much as possible paper skin, it will cook the garlic inside the shell to a creamy texture. It's amazing. If you're having trouble getting your baking paper to fit your tray, scrunch it up first and then unfurl it. It stays in the pan easier and fits like a dream. If you want someone to get more mad you tell them to calm down. Also call them champ. Also call women psycho. They will definitely act more normal immediately. When I argue with my wife I say calm down psycho champ. She gets so angry she passes out, and I win yet another argument. Don't forget to add are you on your period or something. I'm waiting for her life insurance to kick in before I add that in there. Good chance she either has an aneurysm and dies, or she stabs me to death with scissors. Either way it will be a final argument. Ah, the negotiator. If it's your girlfriend slash wife and you really want her to calm down, tell her she's acting like her mother and that her sister would never behave this way. You're going to sleep outside if you do this. If you're planning on spending a decent amount of time drinking at a busy bar, always make sure you give the bartender a really good tip on your first order and ask them how they're doing before you order. Chances are you won't have to wait very long on your next couple of orders. Sometimes drunk me forgets to tip at the end of the night. And sometimes drunk me forgets that I tipped at the beginning of the night. Don't buy things you can't afford. Always poop on company time. This way, at the end of the year, you will have earned like two workdays pay by pooping. Hence you will be a professional pooper, and also less money spent on toilet paper at home. Plus, you don't do your best work when you're holding in your shit. Pooping at work is really in everyone's aligned interests. One of my favorite crapper poems. The boss walked by and I had to laugh, cause I'm talking a shit on time and a half. If you want to open a glass jar like jam, pickles, and the lid won't move, place a spoon with the tip under the edge of the lid and pull the spoon upwards. The lid will bulga and you can open the jar. 
No one else uses a rubber band to get a better grip. Edit, thanks for the silver. I gently beat it on the floor. Angle it 45 degrees so you get a corner. Hit it softly, but hard enough that it jars it loose, try to open it. Repeat. I've never broken a jar, and I've never had problems opening jars. If you're in a public restroom, having to poop, and are using an automatic flushing toilet, put a bit of toilet paper over the motion sensor at the back. This will prevent it from flushing before you're ready which might scare and or splash you. Also, a tiny bit of paper on the water itself will prevent the splash when you drop your poop. Just remember to take the paper off when you are done to initiate the flush. Mostly applies to the USA. Ah, the old Neptune's kiss. Isn't it Poseidon's kiss? Depends on if you're Greek or Roman. In a pinch, the seatbelt in your car can be used as a bottle opener. Good for those 3 a.m. road sodas. Never talk to cops in case of any serious legal trouble. Always ask for a lawyer. Surprised how many people don't really know this. Don't take life advice from internet strangers. Go on. If I denied your advice would I be listening to you or ignoring you? That X percent of Y is the same as Y percent of X. 8% of 25 is the same as 25% of 8 makes calculating sales at stores much easier. If we ever go back to stores. Learn how to cook two or three meals. Use as little out of the box items as possible. I make chicken alfredo, spaghetti and meatballs and tuna or chicken casserole. This means the excuse for eating out all the time is not as prevalent and is something you can do to show off a little bit. If you accidentally have caps lock on, instead of deleting it and starting over, you can highlight the caps and hit shift and F3 to switch it back to lowercase. Edit, thanks for the awards. Because so many people are asking where this works, I know for sure it works in office, Outlook and our internal system at work but it's not universal, sadly. I couldn't say where it does and doesn't work. Putting your Oreos in the fridge makes them taste far better than room temperature Oreos. Same with Twinkies. Learned this as a kid when my mom had to put our lunch treats in outside garage freezer so my dad wouldn't eat them in the middle of the night. Mask glasses? No worries. Use dish soap and wash your glasses with it. Here's the catch. Don't use water just wipe off the soap with a soft towel and fog is no more. Careful with this. If you have special coatings, anti-glare and whatnot, on your glasses it can break them down, and usually not all at once. You'll wind up with patchy bits that make it hard to see. If they're just glass, though, go for it. If you throw a house party where you, as the host, plan on getting quite drunk. Start the cleanup while drunk. Trust me, waking up to a clean house when you're hung over is fantastic. Drunk you will barely remember and sober you has so much less to worry about in the morning. And if you do it near the end of the night a few others might just help out cause they are drunk too. This is the real LPT. Some might think it's a little tacky, but I always start cleaning a little bit while I have company over. They typically grab empties and recycle them and bring their dishes into the kitchen. Bonus because they usually notice what time it is and see it's time to leave. Hungover me wants to know why drunk me put the cat in the dishwasher. Drunk me always starts cleaning near the end of the night. If I am hosting, it's part of my duties and future me appreciates it. If someone else is hosting, they appreciate it and invite me back. Best way to be healthy is to get the correct amount of sleep. Don't go on a strict diet but learn to portion properly and make sure you have a variety of food. Then be active. First two are more important than the last. 
Simple marinara sauce, put crushed garlic and onions, mushrooms optional, into pot and cook until onions are clear. Add can of crushed tomatoes, season, Italian season works perfect, stir occasionally, salt to taste, and when it's hot it's ready. Find coping skills and practice. Practicing when you're calm will help your body recognize what you're doing and calm down. If the only time you do a coping skill is when you're upset it may stop being effective. Identify toxic people and remove them as much as possible from your life. Apologize. Say you're sorry and explain why you are. Find friends where it is a two-way relationship. You're there for them and they're there for you. Make each other better people. Find a hobby and become passionate about it might lead to more friends. How do you find it? Try something new and don't be afraid to be a noob. You'll find a lot more people in a hobby willing to help you than that'll make fun of you. Finding a significant other, S, is fantastic but remember to maintain friendships and hobbies. They should complement your life. Mental health is just as important as physical health. Emotions are real. Get comfortable with all of them. Understand what you're feeling is okay and natural. You're not any less because of how you feel. Find a therapist before you need one. Sometimes you need to talk to more than one to find the one that fits you. Therapists aren't only for times of crisis. Love more and hate less. Hate usually comes from not understanding. There are not excuses for people's behavior, but everybody learns to cope or adapt to situations in different types of ways. Some are more effective than others. Love yourself. Accept who you are. You are beautiful. Learn when it is time to give up. No one is successful at everything. People fail. Relationships fail. Dreams aren't always achieved no matter how hard you try. Enjoy the little things. Keep that inner child alive. Remember don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. Lastly slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. Eat Cheetos with chopsticks. One time I got trashy high and drenched a bag of flamin' hot Cheetos in chocolate syrup and ate it with chopsticks. Not my finest moment but alas, not my worst. Edit, that was supposed to say really high but Imma keep it because it still fits. I am conflicted as to whether or not I want to know your worst moment. You don't, winky face. If you use a bidet, you'll never have to worry about running out of TP during a global pandemic. No one actually knows what they're doing. Also, no one knows what you are thinking, so might as well be honest to yourself. Don't discuss politics at work. But what if it's your job? Senator, we really need your input here. No. So. Normal then. Life is not a rehearsal. Life is just one long improv. Yes and. Alright the government doesn't want you to know this, but the ducks in the park are free, you can take them home. Stop wasting money on chip bag clips. My kids always break them, so I buy clothes pins instead. You can get a pack of 50 at Walmart for about a dollar. I am a fan of metal binder clips, myself. Seriously. Pay your bills when they arrive, not when they're due. Banks, credit card companies, mortgage lenders, utility services, etc. Absolutely love, love, love it when people wait until the last minute to pay their bills. When I signed up with my bank, I read the agreement and got the personal banker to concede that yes. They made a lot of money off late fees. They're not alone. The thing is, paying your bills when they arrive doesn't cost you anything extra. If you can get into the habit, you'll always be ahead of the curve, and if something comes up which necessitates you holding off on a bill, you've got a couple weeks to figure it out. It also relieves a considerable amount of stress. It's a bit like homework. 
Don't put it off until the last minute. Get the assignment done when the teacher gives it to you. I procrastinate absolutely everything in my life except for paying bills. I can't relax until I know that I'm in the clear financially, and they make it so easy now. I get an emailed statement, i.e. transfer money directly from my bank account to the billing company, and I'm done. I don't have to walk to the post office or talk to anybody. It takes three minutes. I love technology. Don't cough if you have diarrhea, I heard it's game over. Oh boy I fucked that up. I am sorry, I'll try and fix it is a lot easier to say with some practice than excuses or shifting blame. After you say that, it's on the other person to act as maturely as you just did. You don't actually need to keep contact with your family. If a relationship with them causes any anguish, you're allowed to cut them out. Their failures aren't yours. My dad left me and my mum when I was a baby, and all my life, when he's tried to make contact, I've not wanted it. But everyone keeps saying, but he's your dad, or it's good for you to see slash talk to your dad, and shit like that. It took until I was in my mid-twenties to find the right words to say, why the hell do I need to force a relationship with a man I barely know? He chose to leave me, and I can count on one hand the times he cared enough to come see me as a kid slash teen. He clearly didn't want me. I don't owe him anything just because I'm his kid. Yeah, this is important. Don't let the overrated idea of being bound by genetics to be solid reasoning to keep toxic people in your life. I haven't talked to my dad's side of the family in almost a decade, and have been a much happier person since. Become attractive and the world is your oyster. While traveling, I met a guy who literally looked straight out of Baywatch. Tall, blonde, stubble, handsome, muscular Dutch guy. He was going on about it's really not that hard to get girls. I was like bro. Do you have any self-awareness? Equally, if you are not conventionally attractive, get good at grooming. Being clean, smelling good and being well-groomed can easily take you from a 1 to a 5. The most unattractive people out there are the ones who don't wash, smell funky, and wear ill-fitting clothes. I've never met someone I couldn't make twice as attractive just by having them wash, style their hair, maybe add a dash of makeup and put on more flattering clothes. I am not a stylist, nor anything like it, but I do enjoy helping people brush up if they ask me. I remember I had a friend in university, who wasn't conventionally pretty, who was going to her sister's wedding. All I did was trim her hair a bit, condition and style it, put on a tiny bit of concealer and eyeliner, and pick her out a dress, and she looked fantastic. And yes, I am often mistaken for the gay best friend who has a talent for making people look good, when I talk about this stuff online. I am 100% straight, and completely unqualified in styling lol, I just enjoy it. Whoa I need a friend like you loudly crying face. When you have cold cereal, put the bowl and a glass of milk in the freezer for about 10 minutes beforehand. It will be the best cereal you've ever had. The milk stays cold and it keeps the cereal from becoming soggy so quickly. You can also just perpetually keep an empty bowl in the freezer, which works for cereal or ice cream. Edited words. When you're in a group of people, and they start laughing, see who looks at each other. People look at the people they feel closest to when laughing. Edit, I realize this isn't foolproof, but typically people look at their closest friend or a partner. A lot of the I look at the floor comments have rolled in haha. And then there is me, who looks down. Edit, how did this get two awards? I love you too floor. This is the first time I've seen this properly stated. People often misquote the research and say people look at the person they are attracted to but that's a misinterpretation. What you said is correct, it's the person they feel closest to. In the case of people in a relationship, it will probably be each other which is where the confusion arises. Someone in a group might be attracted to you but not know you very well so be more likely to look at their friends. Psychology trick right there. A. K. A. Who's stealing, my girl?
Meanwhile she's looking at you wondering why you're looking at everyone but her lol. Wow. You are still with us. Thanks for being such a nice person. As long as you are here, why not like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also you can press the bell icon, so you won't miss any future uploads.